I'm excited to share a message with you guys today. I have some dirt here. It was funny because usually I use this little thing for uh, grapes for Elijah. So this morning he saw, I was like, papaya grapes, papaya grapes. I'm like, no, Phil, you don't want to eat that. That's pretty dirty, not, not, not even close to grapes. Um, but most of you guys are going back to school this week, right? Anybody nervous about going back to school? Anybody like, oh, a little bit, new, anybody going to a new school? Anybody going to a new school? All right, many of you, all right, all right. Uh, that, that, can be, that can be a little nerve-wracking. Like starting new things can be a little challenging. If you're shy like me, if you're an introvert like me, I don't know how, how you get, but sometimes sweaty palms and just, or sweating every day, you're just like heart beating really fast, and you get a, a little bit anxious. Starting something new is usually, um, it's usually hard, especially if you're shy, if you're an introvert. Um, I remember when I, when I started um, to preach, I remember my first message, I was 19, so... Wow, 10 years ago, I am old. 10 years ago, I preached my first message, um, and I was so nervous. Many of you may not know this, but I came to the U.S. when I was 16, so I was, I was in high school, didn't know a word of English, and my youth group was in English, so I, I had to pre prepare all this stuff and preach and read. I had to learn the Bible in English. That was a big transition for me as well, but... I really believe, and where is Evan? Evan's not here yet. Um, but Evan was singing here, or Junior. Some of you can know him as Evan or Junior. So he was singing here today for the first time. And I remember when I was like him, he was nervous. He was upset at me. He's like, Matt, he used, he used the H word, I H U. And I was like, no, you don't. You know you don't mean that. One day you will um, thank me for this. Um, are you thinking of the H word? It, it's just hate. <laughs> Don't overthink it. It's, not <laughs> it's just hate. <laughs> I, know, I know it's not 10 a.m. yet, so brains are not fully functioning. But starting new things can be pretty difficult. Um, but I'm proud of him. And he did exactly what I did. You know what? Many of us have gifts and talents. God gave you things. And before you're like, not me, Matt. Because we're so used to gifts in the church being something like, Playing an instrument, or singing, or being um, a public speaker, or something like that. So we think, oh, I don't have any of that. So God kind of like either gave up on me or forgot about me. He didn't give me anything. That's not true. Do you know the amount of people that are serving here right now? There are so many. I'm just looking at seven that are making this happen as I'm standing here. So there's one of us serving here and seven in the back. There was five in the worship team doing so many different things, so many different things. So before you think, Matt, not me, that's not true. God gave each and every single one of you gifts and talents. But sometimes it takes you to take a step of faith, to see it in yourself, identify it, take a step of faith, put it into practice, put it to serve other people. I wanted you to see one is a very, very famous um, athlete that did what we call a false start. You guys know what that is, a false start in like swimming um, or in a run, a false start, you know what it is? So I want you to watch this video. Um, first of a swimmer, I, I thought it was hilarious. It it's not that funny because you get disqualified, but it's okay. It's way later, you know, a couple years later. It's okay to laugh at the guy now. So I want you to see this video first. And then um, the second one, I know you recognize the guy. Be that guy. Did anyone have? You've seen the video, or you just had a you just had a feeling. Okay. I asked because I did too. I know it was a false start video, but then I was like, which one is it? And he's like, you know, I'll just try it again. No, you can't try again. You are out. You are out. Um, yeah. It's, does anyone here have like a dark humor? You found that funny? 
Yeah, I did too. I did too. I thought it was hilarious. The guy trains his whole life to get to a place like that and then messes up. Uh, it's... I know, he did, he's like, oh, he couldn't, it, it was a belly flop, yeah, it's funny, it's funny. No, this one is not as funny, um, but we can, we can still learn something from it, and I want to know who knows this guy, who knows who this guy is and what, oh boy, oh boy, that's sad, if you, if you watch the rest of the video, it's pretty sad, they focus on the mom, the dad, there's a sad song in the background, so you're like, oh, good thing this was 10 years ago. He won many other medals after that, but he, did a, he went through a false start. Today's message is entitled, Fresh Start or Start Fresh. Fresh start or start fresh. One is a verb, the other one is a name. I don't know what kind of people you are, what kind of person you are. But you're one of the two. You're either a, hey, this is a concept I need to apply to my life, or you're more of an action kind of a person. You're like, I need to start fresh. This message is for you. But before we go into it, I want you to close your eyes, and we're going to pray together. Just asking Jesus, Jesus, don't let me get distracted. Jesus, get me off my phone. Jesus, get, get, get money out of my, my mind. Get my friend, my girlfriend, the new school year, whatever it is that's in my mind right now. Jesus, take that away. Shut those thoughts off so I can focus on you. So I can continue to worship you because you deserve that, Lord. And as I worship you through listening well now, you will speak to me. You will encourage me. You will calm my heart and remind me that you have a plan for me. Will you do that this morning, Jesus? Speak to me. We ask in Jesus' name, amen, and amen. Did you pray that with me? And say amen. Amen, all right. Do you guys know what the word amen, amen means? What does it mean? Say it again. I agree. That's right. I agree, or let it be so. Or in today's terms, it could be something like what he said, all right? Let it be what he said. I agree with what he said. This is why I ask you, hey, do, did you pray what I prayed? Did you agree what I said? That's why we say amen at the end of a prayer. So a false start can be something we go through. Maybe we, we blow it up. We, we make a mistake. And first impressions, unfortunately, are pretty, pretty important. So as you go into this new season or a new school, I remember I used to freak out just about like, what am I going to wear first day of school? What are people going to think of me? First impression is so important, so I keep like freaking out about all of it. It's important, but not that important. It's not that important. I want you to relax a little bit. I want you to relax. You're going to be okay. Don't worry about what people are thinking about you too much. You know what you should think the most about? Is what God thinks of you. And guys, I'm going to warn you now. This is the kind of message that's going to get heavy to then get better. It's going to go dark before it goes light. Okay? So bear with me. I want you to pay attention to this story that we see in the Bible um, found in chapter 8 of the book of John. John chapter 8. It reads this way. Um, Fabio, you have NLT, right? Let me just switch that here real quick. This is a story of a woman, and you're going to see that illustrated here too, that like you and me, starts to make mistakes. And in life, there are some mistakes that we can't just ask for forgiveness for and think it's going to go away. There are consequences to them. There are some decisions that you make that will follow you for a day, or two days, a week, a month. Has anyone here been grounded for a month? And <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You're like, Dad, you haven't forgotten yet? You haven't forgiven me yet? All right? Some mistakes are like that. Some de decisions in life are like that. So this is a woman who was caught in adultery. This is a woman who was caught sleeping with someone who was not her husband. 
Now, I want you to pay attention to what Jesus offers her because the offer is the same to you this morning. Verse 1 says this, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning, he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in an act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd, and they said, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her to death, by the way. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer, so he stood up again. And he said, all right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to this woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. And there are other translations that would say, go and leave your life of sin. Go and leave your life of sin. A lot of times, our lives, as I mentioned, I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times to you guys, that my son is two years old, and even before that, my wife is here, his mother is here to, to be a witness to that. The Bible teaches us that we are somewhat born like this, with water, clean water. But right out of the womb, right into life, things start to get a little dirty. Even when you're a couple months old, you start to cry because you're selfish. You start to cry because you want milk the time you want milk. You start to cry because mom and dad want to put you to sleep and you're like, I don't want to sleep. I want to be awake. And then you get a little older, and I think I, I, told, you, I told you guys, may, probably the majority of you have heard this. Elijah's, one of Elijah's first words was meu, which means mine, right? And he would just say that over and over again. Mine, mine, mine. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. He's speaking. Yeah, but he's also showing a sign of this. There's dirt in his heart. There's sin there already. He's already selfish. No one's taught him that. And he's already got some dirt. He's already making some decisions that are getting him used to thinking that life is about him. It's about making him happy. It's about, hey, it's me all the way. And the more, the more we get older, it gets dirtier. We start to make other decisions, and some are, like, pretty gross. And it takes a little longer for that to come out even if we were to do something about it. Because here's what sin does to us. The more you sin, the more you get used to sin, the more you will want to sin, the more you make excuses for sin. It's a slippery slope. And then you start to make, you start to justify what you do. And then you start to see fault in other people in the society, you start to think, you know, God is just unfair. Why can I do this? I just like it. I just have this desire, which, by the way, please understand me when I say this. I use an extreme example, but it's just for you to understand 
your mentality a lot of times, the culture's mentality, which says this, if you have a desire, you have to fulfill it. If you have a desire, that means you should go for it. If you have a desire, God gave you the desire, so therefore it must be holy and it's okay to do it. It's not true. Do you know how many times I've had the desire to, I don't know, kick somebody really hard to break their legs in soccer? Plenty of times. Should I do it just because I felt like it? Oh, but he hit me first. I have the right now. No, I don't. Do you know how many times I've had the desire to get my car into someone else's car on purpose, right on the side that they're driving because they cut me off or because they're driving so slowly? Yeah, I think Mel was the one in the car with me or Nicole, one of the two. I don't know. I was going home, taking someone home, and there was this old lady driving a car in front of me. And, you know, I'm a patient guy. I promise you guys. I really am. I make it seem like I'm not, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty patient, actually. But this lady was going so slow. And then I was like, why is she going so slow? I understand she's a little older. But I found out she was even slower because she was on her phone. I'm like, lady... You, your reflexes are just dead by this point, and you're still using your phone as you're driving. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Text later. Everybody behind you has a place to get to. And I was just upset. But there was a desire in me to go yell at her, to honk really hard and loud so she, I could grab her attention, get her off the road. But you see what I'm trying to say here? There are desires in us that are wrong. There are desires that are wrong. And sin has a way of making things look like they're not wrong. So we sin, and our hearts become so dirty and so dirty that we, we don't even see a problem anymore. We just get used to it. Sometimes we were like, is there even water in there? Is there even such thing as holiness and purity? And obedience to God and fulfilling a life of purpose? Is there even a point to that? And then we start to even wonder, is there, is there even a God? Should I really worry about this? It all starts with sin. It all starts with decisions and you letting your heart become more and more dirty. More and more dirty. So what do we do? How can we get ourselves clean again? How can we get this water clean again? Well, like a filter. I'm glad you said that. Did you see that there was a filter actually hidden down here? No? I actually have a filter here. With the filter. Want to give it a try? Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. We're going to use this filter. We're going to use this filter. I might make a mess here. My wife is looking at me already from the back. She's like, yeah, you, you make a mess. We'll use a filter. Careful, honey. Yeah, her first words. I know, honey. She, she knows her husband well. How's that water looking? Yeah? Can't see it? How's the water looking? All right. Not too bad. You're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Not too, too bad. We just got to make sure we filter the stuff out. All right. And we're like, you know what? Matt, there's some things in my life, some decisions that I've made. Yep, start to look yellow. And certain things are a little harder to get out, because we've been doing them for so long, they've been in us for such a long time that we don't even see a problem anymore, but we try, to, we try a filter, pretty good filter. It's a coffee filter, right? And what would you say? Drink it. Drink it. Are we done with the water here? We're, we're pretty much done with the water. Yeah. Honey, you're really close to it, so uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about this water. How, what color is it? Yellow. Does it look clean to you? Does it look clean? Oh. Would you give it to your son? 
Yeah, it's filtered. <laughs> filtered water. You wouldn't give it to Elijah? No. What if he's, you know, he's really thirsty? Just, no? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Give it to me, someone said. Doesn't look too good, does it? It looks very yellow. Very yellow. Very gross. This is us. It is better than nothing, I'll give you that. But it's not enough. It's not clean enough. That's our life before God when we're trying to clean it ourselves. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. This is why Jesus came. This is why Jesus met with this woman who was caught in adultery. This is why Jesus lived a perfect life, had a clean, perfect heart from beginning to end. Not to add a little filter to us. This is why when you're reading the word of God at home or here as you're listening to it, these are not steps for you to become cleaner. These are not things for you to do for God to be pleased with you. These are not a try harder kind of a message so that God would accept you. That's not the gospel. That's not the point of the Bible. The Bible points to a much better and greater reality. Someone asked me what that is. What is the solution to this? What is the solution? You know what the solution is? This is the solution. This is what Jesus offered the lady. This is what Jesus offered the lady. This is what Jesus has to offer to me and to you this morning. Fresh water. It's not a, it's not a filter. It's a replacement. It's a brand new water. It's a fresh water. It's a fresh start. It's a new beginning. It's not a try harder. It's not a let me try to clean you up. It's a brand new start. It's a fresh start. It's a blank page. It's a filtered, natural, not filtered, a natural new water. This is what Jesus has for you and for me. I'm not going to put this one in, but if you clean this enough and put new water in, it's drinkable. I will give it to my son. Natalie will give it to her son. What he has is brand new water. A brand new start for you and for me. This is why some people believe that as Jesus was writing on the sand, on the dust, and all these guys were ready to stone this woman who was caught sinning, it's believed, again, it's, it's not in the Bible. The Bible does not say what he was writing. But many people believe that he was writing down everyone's sins. Every person that was present trying to stone that woman to death. He was writing down their sins. Which is why they started to walk away. Because what did Jesus say in response to their accusation? What did he say? That's it. He said, all right. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Jesus said, whoever, any of you who's never sinned, go ahead. Start stoning her. Start stoning her. You with no sin, start stoning her. And it's interesting, right? Everybody walked away. Did Jesus walk away? Jesus had the right to stone her. Uh, Jesus would have probably, I don't know. I don't know what Jesus would have done. I don't know what Jesus would have done. I don't want to know what Jesus would have done. He would probably just raise her up, heal her up, right on the spot. That's what Jesus did to the soldier, right? When they came to arrest him 
and then Peter cut off the guy's ear because he missed the neck. Right? Picks up the ear. Heals it back. He'd probably do something like that. Now, when do you think about your life now? Because if you're anything like me, you're like this. If you're anything like me, you're like this. You've added some dirt to your decisions, to your heart, to your mind, to your life. And what Jesus is offering you as you start a new year in school, as you go into a different school, as you go into a different grade, as you go into a different season in life, into new friendships, into new relationships, into new ways of studying, into new ways of reading, into new ways of obeying, into new ways of serving, into new ways, most important, of loving God and loving people. He's saying, new water, fresh start for you as he gave this lady. Now notice he didn't just say, you know what, I don't condemn you either. And ended things there. Is that what Jesus said? Fabi, can you put it on the screen for us again? Last verse. What did he say to her? He wrote in the dust to keep going. I believe it's verse 11. Neither do I, do I what? Condemn you. Now go and sin no more. Other translations, as I've said, they will translate this from the Greek language, original language of the Bible as go and leave this life of sin. Leave this old you behind. Maybe as you think about your last year of school or even the year before that because you were pretty much at home for a whole year. You didn't make the, the best decisions. You added a lot of dirt to your heart. You added a lot of bad connections, a lot of bad friendships, a lot of bad influence in your life. And Jesus is saying this morning, you have the opportunity to start fresh, to start new, to make this year count, to live a different way this year. So I want to pray with you. Because like the illustration and like the lady, you may be in three different stages. Maybe the first thing you need to do today is to just admit, to just be honest. Notice the lady never said, Jesus, I didn't do that. She was honest. She was honest. Maybe what you need to do this morning is to confess your sins. Maybe you haven't done that in the longest time. And this morning, Jesus is calling you, hey, admit, this is your heart. This is your mind. This is the stuff you listen to. This is the stuff you watch. This is, this is what you do when no one's looking. This is what you do when there are no Christians around you. This is what you do when mom and dad are not around. This is you. Admit it. Confess it to Jesus. Secondly, maybe you've been trying to use filters. Maybe you've been trying your own way to get better, to get cleaner. And as you saw in the illustration, as you saw in the scriptures, it's not enough. It's not enough. It won't work. You won't drink it. Trust me, you won't. You won't be satisfied with it. So you come to the third and last stage, which is where you have clarity, fresh start, clean, to commit your new year, to commit your new grade, to commit your new self to Jesus, to commit your future to him, and to say, you know what, Jesus, I am like the woman caught in adultery. My heart is like this. 
my heart is like this. And I've been trying to clean it myself, but I can't do it, Jesus. It needs to be you. Will you clean? Will you give me clean water? Will you give me a clean and fresh start? And if that's you, why don't you close your eyes right now? Bow your heads. Bow your head and close your eyes right now. And we're going to pray. Jesus hears your voice. Don't wait for me to start praying. You start praying now already. Everyone, everyone's eyes are closed. Everyone's heads are bowed. You start praying to Jesus. Maybe this morning you want to say to Jesus, Jesus, I, I'm here to confess my sin. And don't just say, Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins. Name them. Say them. Jesus, forgive me for saying that word. Jesus, forgive me for watching that show. Jesus, forgive me for being with this person. Jesus, forgive me for doing this, Lord, when no one is watching. Jesus, forgive me for how I speak to my mother. Jesus, forgive me for the lies that I told this week. Jesus, forgive me for the things that I've been hiding. Jesus, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Name it. Name your sin. Admit your failure to him this morning. Because there is forgiveness available. And Jesus, lastly, we want to pray. Committing, Lord. Entrusting, placing our future in your hands. Lord, this fresh start that we all need, Lord. We receive it and we start it today, Lord. As we go back to school either tomorrow or Wednesday, Lord, we ask that this year will be different, Lord. Give us eyes that see what's getting inside of us, Lord. How it is that's adding, that we are adding this dirt into our hearts. Lord, don't let us get our, our water, our self, our heart dirty again. Jesus, give us this new, fresh start, Lord, as you gave this lady. Give it to us this morning. We want to embrace it. Lord, we don't want to do life our way anymore. Our way gets us dirty. Your ways are higher. Your ways are cleaner. Your your ways are the very best for us. We believe, we embrace it, and we ask, Lord, help us. Help us to stay the way you want us to stay. And Lord, and whenever we start to add dirt, Lord, we ask that you don't let us get comfortable with it, Lord. Don't let us get comfortable. Don't let us be okay with what you're not okay with. Show us, Lord, the friends that are influenced of the kingdom of darkness in us and not your kingdom. Show us, Lord, and give us, Lord, the courage, the faith, the love for you and for ourselves to say no and to walk away, not out of hatred, but out of a love for you and a love for self and a love for them. Lord, how will they know if we don't start to be the light? As we saw in the video, Lord, on, on Friday, today, and as we will post it throughout the week as well, Lord, this year, it can be different. I pray that it will be different for many of us that are here this morning. Let it be different, Lord. Let we stand with you. Let we start fresh with you and for you so that people around us will notice a difference, so that people around us will see something happened to us. We ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Did anyone pray that with me? Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Guys, God bless you so, so much. Uh, don't leave yet. Don't leave through those doors yet. You can, you're more than welcome to stick around, talk to people, go to the bathroom, play some foosball, play some ping pong. But don't walk through those doors yet. I'll let you know when your parents' service is over so that you can join and meet them outside. Go in peace. We'll see each other next Friday here, same place, at 7 o'clock. <laughs>